Uh, so anyway, what we're going to be doing today is talking about a song called Nutshell by Alice in Chains. Now this song, I've always loved this song, but I love playing it. And uh, I thought it'd be kind of fun to talk about because it's some open chords. Again, I try and make a variety of, of lessons where we're learning soloing and doing different kinds of things so like that. So what we're yeah. going to be doing with this song is we're going to be looking at E minor. Now I'm tuned standard. You would tune half step down if you wanted to play along with this. So I'm going to play E minor, G, D, and then C. But there's a real unique way of playing this. So let me switch this camera angle here. There you go. So you can see this a little better. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be playing E minor. If you think of a G chord as being a four finger G like this, okay? So I've got two fingers on the bottom like this and then the top of the G like that. That's what I'm going to do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave these fingers here. I'm going to play E minor with those two fingers there. Okay, so it's an E minor chord, and then here we have D, and then here we have G. So this is already part of the chord, but when we add this note in, it's an E minor with a D added. So it's like an E minor 7. So we've got E minor, then we're going to head up to G, and then we're going to move over to D, and when I move to that D, I could take that pinky off or leave it. Okay, I usually take it off. I think it sounds a little more appropriate. So I'm going E minor to G to D. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop to the C add 9, which is this C you might have played before, which is like a G, but you drop these two down. So these two fingers are still there, and then it's the top of a C chord. So I'm going... Now we'll get to a little bit more into this as well. Hey, if you think about it, I'm going E, G, D, C. And it really is that quick. Hey, so E minor, G, D, C. Okay, now let me scan back out here so you can see my whole guitar. Here we go. So we have E, G, D, C. So that's the first thing you want to get used to is being able to play your E minor with these two fingers. G, D, taking the pinky off there and then back to that C at nine. So I'm going. And then what I'm doing is over the top of that, my strum is just this. So I'm going bum, ba dum, ba dum, bum, down, down, up, up, down, down. Now again, you might need to adjust that a little bit. Strumming is always weird from one person to the next, but the big thing for me is I'm never stopping strumming. I just keep moving my arm. I'm not always hitting the strings, but my arm keeps moving. So as I play, you see that? Now what happens a lot is when you're doing that, of course, you're moving from one chord to the next and you continue strumming. So you might actually be strumming when your fingers are in the air as you're moving. The beauty of this is the bottom four strings stay consistent the entire time. That's kind of where that sound comes from. So as I go, so we're going and the strum isn't anything exact it's not like you have to hit certain ones it's more the vibe of the whole thing okay so that's the beginning of it then you're gonna stay on this C add 9 but you're gonna hear something happen on that C add nine that's really cool. And what happens is this first finger comes off the guitar and goes back down. Now again, I'm never concerned about you playing this exact or anything like that, but what I would do is get comfortable with what I'm saying and then go back and listen to the song and see if you can figure out how to kind of replicate it in a way that feels good to you live right now. Yep, we sure are. So we're going E, G, D, C. Now watch this. So it's going da dum, da dum. So it's two different tempos. You have da da and then da dum. So let me play for you. Let me move the camera back up here so you can see this. So here we go. Watch this hand. See that? So that second one for me is happening on an upstrum. Okay, it might be different for you, but that's how it's working for me. 
There we go. So we have. And then what we're going to do is go. So we have da 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 da. And what's happening there is I'm playing that C add nine. And then I'm going to take these off and go to E minor. So I'm going. See that? Now I'm back on my E minor again. Then we start all over. So you stay on that E minor just a little bit longer and then you head back in again, okay? Now, for those of you that really want to get specific with this, there is another part. So if I start playing this, watch what happens because I got to play it kind of in sequence so it makes sense in my brain here. So I'm going. So here's the beginning. Come out of that. Start all over. Same thing. Okay, now we go. Watch this. So what happens on that one is the bottom comes off. So what I do is I take both fingers off. So it changes a little bit different there. Watch this. So it's a really cool, almost kind of smashing pumpkin sort of sound when you take those fingers off. And what I love about all of this is, especially with bands like Alice in Chains, a lot of other bands obviously, is that you can really see how you can get creative with chords. Instead of always thinking of chords as kind of traditional cowboy chords, you know, with the way we play them, which there's nothing wrong with, but we see these really neat ways that we can play these and get different kinds of sounds. Is there something wrong to not let the whole arm swing the whole time? Well, I am letting the whole arm swing the whole time, but you don't have to do that, right? I mean, that, that's how I play is my, my arm is my drummer. That's what keeps me in time. That's what keeps me feeling everything as I play. <laughs> You know, versus, I, again, I, I can't even really replicate it, but, you know, something like that, it doesn't feel right to me. That doesn't mean there aren't songs where I'll think about. You know, where they're more based off down strumming or something like that. Of course that happens. But with a song like this, it feels more correct for me to, to move my arm like that when I play. But that doesn't mean that that's going to work for everybody. Again, you always got to try and find what works the best for you. Okay, so those are the two main parts to think about. There's the... And it starts all over. And then there's the, the third one, which I think is the fourth one too. And again, it changes. So it's not like, you know, when they're playing this, uh, Jerry Cantrell is, is locked into a, a systematic pattern that he plays all the way through. These are just, you're gonna hear them when you listen to the song, but if you listen to the live song, where he does what might change a little bit. The chords aren't changing, the chords are still the same. So as I go, here's the second idea now. Here we go. back again you see so it's really neat and it's worth looking at and again you don't have to play it exact if that's a little bit too hard for you you can leave out some of those embellishments but if you are there in your journey this is a great song to learn how to play and do some stuff like that all right and hopefully that helps you and gives you something to work on for the week all right so take care 